Hello, my name is Mordred Viking, and I'd like to welcome you to this stream of Hearts of Iron 4. This is Kaiserreich. For those of you watching the League of Eight Provinces YouTube series, this is a slightly different uh, branch of that because we did actually play through a large portion of that campaign on Twitch, and unfortunately it was beset by bugs. Bugs probably, hopefully, related to the Allies Construction Projects mod, where it basically was just blocking various decisions and various events from triggering, which meant that I was being lumped with a whole bunch of debuffs, which should have been cancelable through decisions, or just outright giving me debuffs that the AI should have been getting and not players. And because it's an AI debuff, there is absolutely no way of removing them. So this is starting the game again. I know roughly where the last video ends, so I'll kind of blitz my way through that because everyone's seen that bit already. And then from there, we'll take it a bit slower um, as things actually start to happen. So first of all, let's do our starting projects. We're going to start the Nanjing Army Focus. We're going to start up a bit of construction, going to level 8 in the various four production locations. There's a five over here somewhere, isn't there? There it is. So we'll just get some more infrastructure going in those locations. I think that will be good. Then the research is going to be electronic engineering and construction. Dockyards are going to be entirely convoys. Cancelling the support equipment. We just don't have the uh, extra to do that. And then we're going to be making some basic infantry equipment and some soda artillery. So that we can actually start adding some artillery to our armies. I am also going to assign our armies and I'm going to create the new... F oh no, we can't because we can't promote him yet. So how much do we need to promote... Where is he? Tang Enbo. 23 command power. Okay, so once we hit 23, then I will hopefully remember that we need to do that. Alright, uh, let's bump this up to speed 5 and then blitz through. Like I said... I know roughly where the previous episode ended, so we'll just go through until that point. And it was in fact here. We've just finished reading this. So we've gone through the central government, the Germans, the internal concerns, the League will endure. And there we go, we're all caught up. <laughs> that was quick! And now we just need to wait for everything to start going wrong. Because, no, 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 what am I saying? The League of Eight Provinces is mighty and will definitely never crumble. League Marshal Sun Chon Fang met today with the governors of the five eastern provinces who, the public has been told, discussed matters of regular governance and administration. The rice crop in Zhangji has been poorer than expected this year, said Governor Deng Ruzhou. It's important that taxes are adjusted appropriately to compensate. The absence of officials from Guangdong, Guangxi and Hunan, as well as the presence of the purely military figures like General Ji Ziyuan, has led some to believe that the meeting was actually concerned with more important matters of state security. It was only last night that this came out. No, it was last night, definitely. Because remember the uh, the last stream that I did yesterday, 10pm, was when we started doing this. So, 24 hours ago, in fact, from now. Kerensky has just been shot and killed while on the way to the Senate. The assailant was taken down by police, but the goals and intentions of the attacker are unknown. How barbaric. The Zhegan Railway. Today marks the long-planned opening of the Zhegan Railway, the latest extension to which finally connects Shanghai to Nanchang, a city deep in the Zhongzi province. The opening is noteworthy for a few reasons. First among them, the prominent involvement of the Chinese engineers in the construction, despite its significant funding by the Aufsichtrat der Ost Ostasiistische Generalverwaltung, also known as the AOG, which has turned the work into something of a course libre. Those less optimistic have been quick to point out the AOG's newfound access to the rich mineral deposits, as well as the Jing Dezhen porcelain, which has been able to fetch high prices in Berlin. Despite concerns, a threatened attack upon the opening ceremony and the Kuomintang agents did not take place. <coughs> This is currently the best stream of Hoi on Twitch, just saying. Yes. An unexpected announcement. 
Late this morning, to the surprise of many, the AOG publicly announced its plans to purchase and consolidate a number of Eastern Railways on behalf of the Shantung Eisenbahn Gesellschaft, one of the components concerns. Among them is the new Zhegan Railway. The AOG already possesses controlling shares in a number of lines across eastern China, several of which are directly financed. But this dashes the hopes of those who believe the new railway might represent a more equal future for the Germans and Chinese. While Chinese management will be permitted to remain, they will now answer to a German directory board. Though scarcely admitted to the public, few authorities in the League seem to have been forewarned of this development, and the police response to the protests has been slower than normal. So we now have sporadic unrest, which gives stability reduction and war support reduction. Unrest spreads. Unsurprisingly, the consolidation of the Central China Railway under the AOG management has met with widespread criticism. Intellectuals have condemned the move in domestic papers, followed by prominent Anglo-American publications out of Shanghai, and echoed by the syndicalist party periodicals found on the factory floors. More troubling, however, is the news that spread rapidly by word of mouth, and has grown all the more outrageous and fantastical in the process. Tales now describe extensive webs of conspiracy, disappearances of outspoken individuals, and the supposed transfer of millions of yuan into the League Marshal's own pockets. The public's reaction has been predictably furious, and protests have already spread from Zhejiang to Zhangji in the major coastal cities, including the foreign settlements. We lose some political power and some more stability, but I'm sure that's as bad as it's going to get. Beginning with assaults on the prominent German citizens and having grown to become virtually indiscriminate, attacks on foreigners lay emboldened patriotic citizens are spreading like wildfire. The German consulate in Nanjing has advised the Kaiser's subjects to arm themselves and travel only when necessary. The consulates of most other nationalities may soon follow suit. The impact of these attacks on businesses and investment remains to be seen, but recent history suggests the Shaanxi Stock Exchange will not remain unaffected. Lose a bunch of manpower and lose some stability. Oh, you want me to say the Allgemeine Ostasien Gesellschaft? It's a great name! It's a great name! And we do still have the AOG in our government as the liberal market liberals. The Totalist Charter. Mussolini, Valois, Beria and other interested parties arrived in Birmingham today to discuss the common ground. Boycotts in Beijing. Talk of a boycott on German goods has accompanied growing protests throughout eastern China, provoked by an assortment of Kuomintang agents, religious cultists, and nationalist ideologues. More disturbingly, some local garrisons have stepped back and allowed the unrest to grow, unwilling to risk being labelled a Hanjian, or race traitor. In order to ward off intervention from Beijing, advisers from the Nanking Commission have suggested that the League Marshal Sun publicly declare that the situation is under control. Elements of several divisions based in Nanjing stand ready to be deployed to cities along the lower Yangshi, where protests are the largest, and provincial garrisons could be given the green light to take whatever action they deem necessary to quell the open dissent. So we have Mu's maximum force, which costs some political power, gives us more stability but costs us more war support and also costs us more manpower, or punish only the violent, which is a much more moderate version of the lot. But we are protecting our business, so use maximum force. Railway bombings. Explosions have rocked several stations and rail lines slated to become part of the Central China Railway, with one bomb shredding a train car in a crowded station at Hangzhou, leaving dozens killed and injured. The deaths and delays have brought transportation to a standstill in many areas and has slowed the deployment of additional forces to quell the growing unrest. Blame for the attacks has been leveled against various targets, from bandits to the KMT to Japanese agents. Some, especially conspiracy-minded individuals, have suggested German involvement, who they suggest are targeting their own possessions to set the stage for an intervention. Terrorism. So, three sets of infrastructure are damaged, we lose some stability, and also a little bit more manpower. Edward VIII crowned as the King of England. Have I ever seen Kaiser Wilhelm die without capitulation? Yes, I think so. What attempt number is this? Attempt number one, obviously. George V, the last king of Great Britain and Ireland to have ruled the Home Isles themselves, has passed while in exile in Canada. The first Windsor King, his reign shall be remembered with sorrow and sadness, as during it Britain lost both the Welsh Creek and its homeland. Reports from the North and South. Troubling reports have reached Nanjing from Zhuzhou and Guangzhou. In the 
Zhang Fu Insurgent Zone, KMT guerrillas have staged a series of increasingly bold raids, striking around the inland cities of Yongding and Longyan. Governor Zhu Rinren has long struggled to assert control over his mountainous province, with control often limited to the coast and the larger inland cities, and now his grasp grows all the more tenuous. Meanwhile, in Zhangzhou, Governor Zheng Yunyan reports increased agitation by Yingdao adherents, spreading over the border from Shandong. These religious fanatics have been a point of long-standing frustration for the governor, but their involvement may well be encouraging the rising unrest. So Zhu Hai and Jian lose some stuff, and we have sporadic unrest now being replaced by spreading unrest, and also disrupted industry. A telegram has been received from Beijing, apparently sent at the direction of the Imperial Commissioner Wu Weifu, who sits as the Qing Army Minister and the undisputed head of the nation's central military apparatus. The message inquires about the current chaotic state of affairs, clearly worded with the intent to force the League Marshal Sun to admit some weakness or hardship. The central government under Wu's direction has repeatedly attempted to extend its direct authority south, but so far such efforts have been in vain. Our response must be careful and measured, demonstrating that we need no central government assistance to disperse these insurrectionists. Everything is under control. The Wuhu incident. This afternoon, protests in the city of Wuhu, bolstered by striking workers from the nearby German-owned factories, quickly escaped police control. The garrison, itself reinforced by a section of German-trained troops from Nanjing, attempted to restore order, but in the confused melee, somebody started shooting. Within, met within a matter of minutes, the police, the garrison, and other reinforcing troops had begun firing on the crowd and each other. Over 200 already confirmed dead, with four times as many likely wounded, and the resultant outrage has already sparked protests in the surrounding areas. The situation is made all the worse by the presence of a small foreign settlement within the city, many already claiming the lethal force was only used to protect these foreigners, and the killings will most likely feature on international newspapers by tomorrow morning. Could things get any worse? So the steelworks has been destroyed. Steelworks is actually a civilian factory, as we uh, decided yesterday. And then the political power and stability are also decreased. And Qing refuses further cooperation. Citing the recent incident, uh, woohoo! Governor Chun Tiao Yuan has issued an ultimatum calling for the withdrawal of non all non-provincial forces from Anhui, as well as the immediate handover of those officers responsible. Though Chen assures the League that his own soldiers will continue to quell the spreading unrest and disorder, he refuses further cooperation with the League authorities and denounces the creation of the Central China Railway, which he blames for pushing the patriotic citizens to the edge of despair. Under normal circumstances, this behaviour would be unacceptable. But Chen's sharp stance has already proven popular, and decisive action could serve to further divide the now fragile League. So we can bide our time, which comes with penalties, we can join them, take control of the Anhui province, basically taking over control of that country. We'll just speed through a bit of time. So this is all the stuff that was damaged, but it does repair over time. Afghanistan declared war on the Dominion of India. After the Welsh Creek and the British Raj collapsed into turmoil and warfare, the neighbouring kingdom of Afghanistan took advantage of this as an opportunity to seize Peshawar and Quetta, both border regions of the Dominion. And now, because we are low on political power, we are going to get the modernised Jing Ling Academy because we did find an issue with this yesterday. The Jinling Academy in Nanjing is in heady ne heavy need of modernization. Sun neglected to introduce modern strategy and tactics to many of its graduates, know only how war was fought decades, if not centuries ago. We must modernize the theories of the academy and make sure that its graduates will be officers capable of operating in modern warfare. So the issue with this focus is that it will change the economy law to mo early mobilization. If you've already gone past early mobilization, then, like, to uh, partial mobilization, it will actually go backwards to early mobilization. So it's actually a good idea to get this as early as possible. Plus, mobilization laws usually cost 100 political power. This is effectively costing you just 35, and you get it early. So, good idea to do that one second. Otherwise, you probably want to try and burn down some of the political power negatives. Black Monday, on the 3rd of February, 1936, the Berlin Stock Exchange stopped sinking. It plunged. Fueled by the instability of the market's panic, selling erupted as soon as the stock market opened on Monday morning. Mein Gott! 
Black Monday reaches the east. Although it began a world away, Black Monday's fallout has already reached China. The Shanghai Exchange plummeted before closing at numbers unseen since the financial tumult of 1925. And the local institutions are already doing what they can to mitigate the damage. Fortunately, the average citizen is unlikely to feel any immediate impact, but the AOG, already staggering under an extensive retaliatory buy cut, faces dire financial circumstances. Its clerks have already issued notice that it may be unable to pay the usual rent for its various concessions, and that the final payment promised for the Zhegan Railway has been indefinitely postponed. Without this planned revenue, we'll be forced to enact major budget cuts. So disrupted industry just got even worse. The Travaille elected in France, so this time we didn't have electoral gridlock. Interesting. The Austrian Empire withdraws from Italy. It is clear that Black Monday has hit the Austrian Empire hard. The Austro-Hungarian Reichskriegs minister today announced that he was recalling divisions stationed in Italian territory, unable to afford the financial burden of keeping them safe from the Socialist Republic of Italy. For good or for ill, the Italian Republic is now effectively independent from Austrian domination, at least until the Austrians regain their full strength and decide whether or not their interest in the Italian peninsula are worth regaining. Many in the Italian Republic have expressed worry about whether or not this will leave them exposed to attack from the Socialist Republic of Italy, a move which will plunge Italy into civil war once again. Dissension in the ranks. Word of suspended pay has already spread as far as the league's junior officers, and the reaction has been predictably negative. For some time, this will mean an end to the lifestyles of vice and extravagance, at least for the time being. But for many a common soldier, it's the difference between life and starvation. The officers' grumbling is made all the worse by a small but vocal clique of officers sympathetic to Chen... Tiaoyang's cause, arguing that the League should never have become so dependent on these German handouts. In the barracks and in the streets, soldiers are being riled up by Ying Wandao adherents seeking converts and preaching against foreign wickedness, while the Kuomintang has and other leftist groups hide in the shadows, disseminating propaganda and denouncing these imperialistic collaboration. Nothing has yet come of these activities, but what was once routine unrest is now threatening to undermine the very foundations of the League. Rebellion will be punished. Some divisions in Zhejiang, Jiangxi, and Fujian have been demobilized. So this is where I'm going to pause it. I'm going to save it. Because I, I know we're at the very peak of things going badly. Uh, but this is where I'm going to start actually reassigning troops and choosing where they need to go. Also, we need to make... Where is he? Tang Embo promoted. Make him into a field marshal. Because he does not have the substance abuser trait. He's a career officer and he's an infantry officer. He's actually a very good commander. And then we are going to assign half of you to one army and then half of you to another for reasons you shall see shortly. Zheng Yunyan is one of our two good generals. And then the other one is going to go to Deng Ruzhou. And then your troops are going to be down here in the south. And your troops are going to be up here in the north, around Nanjing, I think. Maybe something like so. Actually, let's do something like so. And that's going to give us some time to actually put troops in better locations than they are currently. Cool sign Slinky! Whoa! Crikey! That's generous. <laughs> I completely misread that earlier. That's insane. Thank you so much for that, Slinky. Here, buy all of the officers beer and tea. That should improve morale. Well, it'll certainly improve my morale. And I shall have some more mulled wine to celebrate. That was insanely generous. Thank you so much for that, Slinky. Man, mental. And all the thanks are rolling in. <laughs> Yeah, that unlocked a lot of uh, emotes. Thank you very, very much. A heinous crime. Sun Chun Fang lies mortally wounded, shot from behind by an assassin disguised as a serving woman. His body brave bodyguards were able to quickly overpower and imprison the woman, but rumours have already begun to spread and swirl. The incapacitation of the League's only widely recognised leader is an unprecedented disaster. And unless he recovers soon, a successor is unlikely to be chosen without considerable bloodshed. 
Without effective leadership and with political fragmentation all but a certainty, the ongoing crisis will surely spin out of control. The League's fate lies in the balance. Who could possibly be responsible? Sputnik! Thank you very much for the follow. Welcome to the channel. Spreading insubordination. Telegrams have been flooding. In all morning, accompanied by the din of ringing telephones throughout the League Marshal's palace, together with describing a rapidly deteriorating situation across much of the League. With no promise of pay, soldiers in Zhuzhou, Nanjing, Guangzhou, and several other cities are either refusing to act or outright joining the spreading violence and the looting, while police and garrisons in Hangzhou and Wuji have gone on strike. Riots there and everywhere are gradually escaping all semblance of control, made all the worse by Sun Chon Fang's incapacity. Troublingly, telegraph lines south of Fujian appear to have been cut, leaving us entirely in the dark as to the likely worsening situation in Guangzhou and Guangxi, while Nanjing itself is now practically in the throes of violent revolution. Marshal Sun must wake soon. Lose even more political power, lose some more war support. I'm sure it'll be fine. It'll be fine, right? Riots reach the Marshal's Palace. The Nanjing police have been unable to contain one of the many riots spreading across the capital. As officers defect or sit idle, the unlockers join the chaos, looting and burning homes, businesses and now government offices. The hasty arrival of military units under the command of General Xi Zhuzhuan, already deployed nearby, seems enough to protect the Marshal's Palace. But the roar of flames and the burgeoning crowds are audible even within the chamber where Sun Chunfang lies, deep in a coma. Like rats fleeing a sinking ship, officials have been observed scurrying away into the back streets and alleys, arms burdened by silver coins, papers, and perhaps government secrets. The illusion of the Qing hegemony shatters. The facade of Chinese unity, having held together for nearly a decade, has begun to crumble. Rising unrest in the League of the Eight Provinces, the economic shock of Black Monday, portending the German retrenchment, and the inability of the national government to deliver a decisive response to either has made one thing clear. Beijing's monopoly on power is broken, and now the future is any man's game. This will not go well. So what that event actually means is quite an important one is the whole of China used to be united in one faction. As you can see, there is now no faction present in China. So, the, the shattering has well and truly begun with that event. And there it goes. A message from Anhui. They declare war. Chen Xiaoyan declares war. Calling upon his fellow governors and the central government to aid him in his cause, Chen Xiaoyuan has denounced Marshal Qi's ascension as totally illegitimate and a farce, accusing him of planning Sun's assassination and his following grab for power well in advance. This argument has already proven convincing, as a number of younger officers have already deserted to his ranks. The other, the other governors remain silent. For now. Shandong did not declare war this time. That's a big difference. Alright, let's drop this to speed 2 so I can actually get my troops in order. Let's start organising some front lines because we've got a battle on our hands. Let's defend all of this and then tell you to attack over here. And you guys I'm going to leave where you are and in fact you've actually just lost a couple of troops. Never mind. Let's have you march in here, you march in here, you here. See if you can take some land behind their line. In fact, you can go down there. You can come over here. Go! Marshal Wu Fai Fu backs An Qing. Following the death of Marshal Sun Chao Fang earlier this year and the subsequent collapse of the Qing authority, few expected Imperial Minister of the Army, Wu Weifu, the real power behind the throne in Beijing, to take overt military action. Yet this morning, he and the Assembly of President Cao Kun announced their formal support to the provisional government of Anhui, led by, Cha, well, led by Chen Taoyuan. Wu and Cao have long chafed under the German oversight placed on their government in 1927, and their support to the Governor Chen telegraphed to the world that they are casting off the German influence. 
While a full deployment of the Qing's army is unlikely given the ever-present threat of the Fentian attack from the north, limited numbers of Qing troops are already mobilizing to destroy the enemies of Governor Chen and Beijing's new national order. The chips start to fall. So again, Qing did actually go against us this time, which again, first time they supported us. Um, but no Shandong. Shandong has remained neutral, which is a really big deal. That changes a lot. What's my manpower law? Volunteer. This is definitely where things get interesting. General Shang Wan rises in Zhejiang. Citing the abuses of his superiors, Shang Wan Zunjiang has rallied the Hangzhou garrison and the units under his command to Chen Taoyan's cause and against the governor Chen Yi. The governor, installed after the removal of Lu Xianting in 1932, was never particularly popular amongst his men, but enough have remained loyal to him to fortify the city's core and await reinforcements. Sang Wan has long been known for his shameless ambition, but this rapid spread of insubordination is increasingly concerning. When do you arrive? One day, 14 hours. Oh, zero hours. You're about to get there. Eh. It's unfortunate. Well, we can block you from getting over here. Uprisings in Fujian. Kuomintang rebels, already fomenting insurrection against the League, have begun a general uprising in the Fujian province, emerging from the mountains to seize a number of villages in the province's interior. The Jiangfu insurgent zone was already known to be a danger, but with the chaos now gripping the League, there's every possibility that they will cut a path to the coast, opening the way for aid from their syndicalist allies. At present, Governor... Zhu Yinren is known to have several divisions in and around Wangju, but this is unlikely to be enough to stem the tide. So again, we can play as the Kuomintang, or we can say syndicalist scum! Nanjing Clique declared war upon left Kuomintang. Who are these guys? So we're going to grab you lot. And we're going to give you a new order, which is going to be... Actually, you know what? Try and get us around if you can. So there's only five of you. No, don't do us around. Just hold those provinces. And we should have two new should've units. Which are both down here, so you can join that. Huzzah! Whoa! Cool Sign Slinky is definitely in a generous mood today. Crikey! Cool Sign Slinky has gifted a sub to Ellenditch, the Count Starhamburg. Huzzah! Tokriva, Sikso, literary artist. The five of you, congratulations on the gifted subs, courtesy of Cool Sign Slinky. Thank you, Slinky. Tis the season. Tis indeed the season of rebellion. Huzzah! What did I mean of being merry and giving stuff? Because right now it feels like rebellion. What? Cut off right here. Huzzah! It's too tempting not to do. We would destroy one of their cavalry units if we do this. General Xi assumes control. Following a closed meeting lasting nearly four hours, Xi Zhuzhuan has emerged. Huzzah! To declare himself the acting League Marshal and promises to restore order to the fractured League. Fort Minor! Gifting a bunch of subs himself. Crikey. Huzzah! The Bridge Pig, Slubber King, It's Zovicia, Bostamani, and Michael Collins. Congratulations on the gifted subs, courtesy of Fort Minor. Thank you so much for that. Huzzah! Indeed, subs galore. We'll have a navy in no time with so many subs joining the cause. <laughs> 